Number one is the coalition between the two most popular opposition parties and from all indications they have re been received very well indeed by the general public who are now it seems actively looking for more robust and inclusive style of government going forward. Number two, the two-man government. It appears to most that the government is ruled by only two people who make decisions for everybody across all ministries regardless of the assigned minister. Number three, health. You don't have to look very far. Just have a look at your own health service. It's crumbling in front of your eyes. And simple necessities like bed sheets, blankets are hard to come by. The upkeep of the hospitals Fiji wide is a national shame. And the backlash on the terrible public health services has angered many, if not all. Wages. This is very concerning as ministers and prime ministers' wages are huge compared to the working person. If the working person on the street earns $5 an hour for a 40-hour week, that means he earns $200 a week. Compare that to your ministers who can be earning between $5,000 to $6,000 a week, plus benefits of drivers, bodyguards, free vehicle, free housing, free petrol, and the list goes on. So five to six thousand dollars a week compared to two hundred dollars a week. Unemployment. We have one of the largest rates of unemployment in Fiji, and this can lead to other social factors like crime, domestic violence, etc. There's no significant investments at present that can bring back employment on a large scale. Poverty. Again, this is at one of the highest rates we've ever seen in our history. And again, depending on who you talk to, can be upwards of 50% uh, in levels in some places in Fiji, which is very disturbing indeed. Number seven, government debt. This is extremely worrying as we continue to borrow huge amounts to keep the country going. The question is, who is going to repay this huge debt? The answer, unfortunately, is our children going forward. And another thing I'd like to know is how much is our debt, the actual debt, and how much do we pay every month? Some people say 20 million, some people say 50 million a month, some people say 100 million a month in the repayments. I don't know, I haven't got that information. Next, number eight, is education. This is another core problem uh, we have with education going forward. The serious concerns obviously are overcrowded where we all know, I think it's between 20 and 30 should be a maximum uh, amount of students in classes so they can learn and understand and generally um, excel in class. Now, in some classes, especially in the uh, urban areas, 30, 35, 40, 45, my kid's class had 50 people in it. How can, I, how can a teacher be expected to teach 50 people and get them over the line? Very, very sad indeed. Also, we were expecting for many years uh, iPads, um, laptops to help the students. That's been non-existent as well. So the system is failing the children. And number nine, I don't know, I want to be positive, but uh, we don't even have running water. We don't even have running water in our taps or constant supply. I can tell you every single person in Fiji is affected by this. And we don't have a constant supply of electricity, regardless of what they say. There's the, you can't tell 100% of the population to buy generators, diesel fuel, to get electricity. You can't tell the people to buy big water tanks to store water. This, those things are for the rich, and maybe the rich and famous. The average person can't afford these things, and therefore it's very, very concerning. 16 years in, in power, and we can't even get water in our taps or electricity for the masses. Very, 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 very um, disturbing and very concerning. And I won't go on much more because you know about the roads, you know the situation there, health centres, hospitals, footpaths. Uh, basically, the upkeep of this country is deteriorating day by day. There are so many controversial subjects, like the public pleading to have locally elected councillors instead of being forced to, to accept special administrators appointed by central government. And what about the USP saga and uh, the non-payment of their fees to the USP? That will impact the students eventually. Very sad indeed. Now, 
It's the time, this is the time for government to assess this grim situation. Maybe it's time to consider hanging up the gloves, saying goodbye after 16 years, and let others lead our nation with inclusiveness, dedication, vigor, passion, and commitment in their hearts, and hopefully rescue us from what seems to be the brink of disaster. Our party is the People's Alliance. It is a movement of change, and together with the National Federation Party, we will march into this year's election with love in our hearts and not hate.